Hi everyone, hope you're all doing well. Today I thought it would be time to do an update in Tattoo Chef. We've not done one for a while and I thought with earnings last week, it might be a good time to talk about this one. So here we go, we're gonna look at the chef. Now, if you don't know, if you don't know my story with Tattoo Chef, I was quite bullish in Tattoo Chef um, previously through 2020 as it came through the SPAC towards the midpoint of 2021. Unfortunately, through the midpoint of 2021, at that point, unfortunately, there was a few errors made by management, in my opinion, and I was a bit disappointed with the performance and the management through the back end of 2021. Uh, there was delays in earnings, there was a lot of strange actions about gifting shares, and the biggest thing is management weren't uh, meeting expectations and their own expectations as well. And the combination of a lot of factors here meant that I lost a bit more of my bullish opinion about Tattoo Chef as the more 2021 went on and it actually led me to um, releasing some capital and selling some shares in Tattoo Chef. So I sold off a, a bit of a chunk of my position in Tattoo Chef and um, luckily scraping it out for a profit before the whole market tanked. Um, and I still hold some shares in Tattoo Chef uh, because in long term, I still think there could be a potential good business here but I did sell out a lot of my position um, as the year went on so I have reduced my risk with this one but I am still holding some shares because I still think there's some potential with this company but um, I have lost as the what I was bullish on this company uh, compared to where I was um, in 2020. Now if you do look at the share price point of view obviously it has been slaughtered since it came through the initial SPAC, SPAC it did do quite well through 2020, 2021 but um, through the mid 2021 point as a lot of growth stocks and the market in general has sold off unfortunately you've seen this stock go from you know twenty dollars um low twenty dollars all the way down to below spac prices seven dollars so um yeah it's it's basically performing in line with the market at the moment but as always i don't want to get too caught up on what the share price is doing i want to be focusing on what's happening inside the business and if the business is moving in the right direction because at the end of the day over the long term that's where the share price will move um in the long term so um, looking at Tattoo Chef and the recent earnings, um, they were interesting. I thought it was a step in the right direction after especially two horrible quarters. Um, I think I made videos on the last two quarters and if you did see my videos on Tattoo Chef, I pretty much said they're terrible. And um, what was quite funny to see as well is that Tattoo Chef has definitely come from when I was first interested in this stock at $10, has come a very big YouTube stock. And what was really crazy to me is to see uh, especially in Q3 and Q4, there was a lot of a lot of the YouTube channels that do cover Tattoo Chef now, is they were still very ultra bullish after Q3 and Q4, and were saying, oh, they were absolutely brilliant quarters, and I was looking at them quarters going, they were pretty horrible, and that's when I took the risk off the table. And that was what I've, I found really crazy about this stock and the reaction to it. Um, but going into this quarter here, I've got to say, for someone that was, myself, that was quite negative in Q3 and Q4, I actually walked away from Q1 going, okay, there was actually some positive things in there. I don't think it's back at the performance where the, the business is moving, what I saw in early 2020, 2021, 2022, where we were starting to get promised all these, you know, the store expansion going on, you know, from 4,000 stores to 12,000 stores. I'm thinking, you know, this is really ramping up now. Unfortunately, uh, and that didn't really end up translating to revenue. And um, now we're starting to see actually some positive steps in the business you know steps of and some of them are quite basic really which you shouldn't be doing as a public company but actually reporting on time you know we 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 actually had that the correct numbers being here not so much suspicious actions going on and actually starting to go back to being a revenue company you know the big thing about tattoo chef is it's a growth company it's a revenue growth company and that's obviously you, the first thing before you even get on to gross margins and profitability this should be growing you know this is it, to keep the valuation that Tattoo Chef is at, the first thing it needs is revenue growth. And if it isn't growing revenue and it's a, valued at a revenue growth company, that's a problem if you don't start doing it. But the thing is, is that is a step in the right directions. Uh, another step in the right direction was gross margins. Uh, that was a bit of an improvement compared to what it has been. The losses were still a bit of a problem, um, which we'll talk about in a second. But yeah, overall, I felt like this earnings was after horrible Q3 and a horrible Q4 was at least a quarter back in the right direction. I don't think it was brilliant. I don't think we're out the woods yet, but it was a step in the right direction. So we'll take a look at some of these numbers and kind of what happened on here. So like I said, revenue rose 37 percent so first of all revenue growth was great 10 out of 10 you, you can't question the revenue growth what this company should be doing is 30 percent revenue growth and um, ideally towards high 30 percent revenue growth it did it 
so we can't ask for any more from that point of view, uh, from that revenue uh, growth, growth point of view. It smashed our list expectations as well. This is where, it, it, we'll talk about this in a second, but Tattoo Chef branded products revenue increased 21% or 6% of total revenue. Now we'll talk about this in a little bit detail in a second, but this was a little bit in, uh, of a negative. The revenue growth was back in the right direction. However, the Tattoo Chef branded products wasn't up to the standard of the revenue growth, which suggests to me that the private label growth was actually the strong point. Now the problem is, the whole thing of Tattoo Chef is the branded products grow. That is where you wanna have a brand recognition and as well having the, the whole, what the company is built on is this Tattoo Chef brand doing well, is the Tattoo Chef brand will offer higher margins than private label companies. So for in the long term, from a brand recognition point of view and profitability point of view, the Tattoo Chef branded product should have been higher. So that was a little bit of a disappointment. Even though the revenue was good, the products, the Tattoo Chef branded products should have been a little bit higher. Adjusted EBITDA was a negative at 13 million. Same again, this was a little lower than what we want it to be. And um, this needs to get moving back in the right direction. And it lost down at 17.6 million. Now they did say that this is probably gonna be one of the worst quarters they do have. But yeah, we do roughly need to see this kind of moving back in the right direction because when we do get onto the cash balance in a little bit, you can't carry on losing money at the rate they are doing with the cash balance they do have, but we'll talk about that in a second. Now, branded SKUs carried on increasing, which is good. Obviously, we want more products and added more than 10,000 new points of distribution. Now, what I thought was really interesting is there was no mention about the actual store improvement. For a lot of historic quarters, we've seen Tattoo Chef go, oh, we're increasing this amount of stores um, and this is... And obviously you think, okay, if they're increasing stars, that's gonna trans transfer into more sales. Now, I wonder why they haven't mentioned any star improvements this time around. I wonder if it's because last time they did and then it didn't really show on revenue. That could be one um, point of why they're not doing it. The other point is that there wasn't that much of an increase in star location. So um, was thinking, I don't, as far as I'm aware, I didn't see analysts ask any questions on this. And um, one thing that I would have liked to see something mentioned around, they did say that they are gonna launch a branded oat, bar, oat butter bar set to production in Q2 2022. These bars should be something really interesting to keep an eye on because they should have very good margins when they do come out. So. Um, be interesting to see that launch. Uh, we've been waiting a long time for that. And cold storage facility operational in April 2022. This is also key because uh, it's all vertical integrated and if they do have their own cold storage unit or facility, that will also save money. And what that will do is also improve the EBITDA and losses going forward. So this is something also key to keep an eye on because that's gonna be one of the drivers to improve these a little bit further down the line. And if you do look at gross profit, it was down at 11% of revenue. This is a much improvement off the last quarter, but still we want to see this kind of improving a lot more than what it is on 11% gross margins is very hard to hit profitability. So in the longer term, we do need to see this increasing, but it was moving back in the right direction. Um, if we do look at the cash and equivalents, it was down at 57 million. And like we said, we did burn through quite a bit this quarter. So it is important that they do start shrinking their losses, which they should do if they keep improving the branded products, launch, uh, products with better gross margins and also improve saving costs as well and um, so yes the cash is down but you've also got to remember they did make um, two big acquisitions recently and as well as that um, they, the Q1 at the moment is taking a lot of costs in with inflation and vertical integration so I think this will improve a lot more that we don't have to worry about that like cash balance at the moment, but certainly something just to keep a bit of an eye on. Now going into a bit of a breakdown on the revenue, like we said, it was actually really impressive, the revenue growth. However, this is my only little bit of concern that happened with the revenue growth, is you'll look at the Tattoo Chef here. You can see that they, uh, the Tattoo Chef brand products last time round was 68% of revenue. It's now down at 60%. So this really does need to be getting higher and higher because that's where the better gross margins are. And to see the decreasing is obviously not great. Private label uh, obviously increased a massive amount, so that was 31% to 35%. So the private label was the fastest part of the business that was growing as a percentage of revenue that it makes up. So the reason why that's probably higher is because of the acquisitions that are coming in and supporting that. So that was probably one of the main drivers of revenue, um, which is fine, but in the longer term, this does need to start improving to more tattoo chef uh, products. Um, and also there was an increase, which I don't know what this is for. Um, I tried to find a confirmation, but there was other revenues that did increase a massive round as well by about 3 million or 10X over year over year. My guess would be that that's potentially because they made acquisitions, they potentially sold some parts of that business off, maybe like machinery they acquired in the facilities, 
Not sure that would be my guess. Um, so this might be a one-time off payment. So maybe that's why um, the revenue was a lot better than what was expected is the jump of the private label starting to come in and this certain little bit of other revenues here. So like I said, the, like, like I said, the revenue growth was good. However, don't read too much into it. Like this is Tattoo Chef back again because this private label growth needs to go back to Tattoo Chef products. And I don't think this other revenue is sustainable going forward. And this was a bit of a screenshot from the transcript in the earnings call, which you'll see. Um, I think it was George uh, Kelly, I believe it is. He actually had some really good questions in the conference call. And he said that he wants, uh, when they asked the management team about improving the tattoo chef brand he said that they said that we what we want to see is the tattoo chef brand to be making up uh, between 75 percent and 80 percent with the remainder being private label so when we do look at the recent revenue side of it is that if this does get to 75 to 85 percent and that private label goes into the tattoo chef brand that would actually be really good so that's the long term aim. If they do that, that is obviously what we need to see. Um, and that's something to keep an eye on like, as this year goes on. Is this percentage of revenue starts grow, going to that 70 80% rate? If that happens, then obviously that means the brand's very successful. But also from a profit side, that's very key as well. And this also sums up with uh, Stephanie that came out and says that the branded products out of the new acquisitions they made, which is New Mexico and Ohio, are very little and are still pretty much private label companies at the moment, which would sum up from what we were just talking about a second ago which is that the private label was the big jump so the big jump is quite a bit from the acquisitions here and um, so yeah the key thing in the next 12 months is to watch that conversion from private label to tattoo chef brands because if that happens in the next 12 months that is going to mean that the tattoo chef revenue will have very good numbers and also the gross margins will improve massively so that is the key thing for me this year to be watching is the conversion of that tattoo chef brand making up more revenue uh, percentage up and the last little point i'm going to say here is something that i kind of spotted through the sec filing is um last year in 2021 three customers accounted for more than 89 percent of the company's revenue during the three months uh ended march 31st 2021 and um, which you can see here there was customer c now, what I thought was really interesting is customer C, um, if you look at customer A, customer A, a uh, last year made up 38% of revenue, and this year it made up 35% of revenue, which you would say, okay, if they're expanding stores, new partnerships, that's fine. Um, that customer, they're not gonna be so reliant on that customer. Totally makes sense. One of the big standout things to me was customer C. Um, in, if you look at the year over year, customer C basically lost half of what they counted up for the Tattoo Chef. 41% down to 19% is a massive drop off. Um, you know, this this should have been only a couple of percentage points. So I, I'm kind of wondering what's going on there. Um, I wonder if it's potentially why Tattoo Chef underperformed last year on a revenue point of view is because they, as the year went on, customer C was potentially um, selling less of the products or taking less SKUs in. Don't know if this is just kind of me speculating on this point, but Potentially, this I would be. More, I would like to. I might invest, um, email investor relations on this. Actually, I kind of want to know what's going on here with customer C. Um, you know what? Why is this dropping twenty percent? Is this um, some supply chain issues or anything? What, what's the color on this? Uh, is this why twenty twenty one was a bit disappointing because they were as the year went on, they were reducing the products to selling. Um, not sure, but this is something that I thought was really interesting just to keep an eye on as well. So um, yeah, just notice that in the SEC filing. So we'll, something that I might have a little bit of a dig into there, but just thought I'd shout that one out as a big massive change that I noticed in the in the financial, the the filings this year. So overall, what are my thoughts with Tattoo Chef at the moment? Well, I'm, I'm very much in the same place as I was three months ago. I'm definitely not bullish on the company as much. I'm very much neutral on it. I don't have enough conviction to buy any more shares at the moment. Um, however, the, the what was here this time around was a lot more bullish than what there has been recently. The company is starting to move a little bit more in the right direction. However, there is still a lot of work to be done here. The company still needs to keep up very good amounts of revenue growth. And as well as that, the key is to see now the, tr the transition this year from that private label to more branded products. And obviously that will mean better gross margins as well. So. Yeah, couple of steps in the right direction. Still not perfect, still not got conviction back, but it was a few steps in the right direction and there's a few things to keep an eye on uh, as this year goes on. So yeah, that's my update for Arsenal Tattoo Chef. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll catch you a bit.